secretary, jurors, journalists, colleagues from the media. I'm pleased to welcome Secretary Truss on her first official visit to Jakarta. I met Secretary Truss for the first time in New York City at the sideline of the UN General Assembly meeting. The visit of Secretary Truss provides a good opportunity for Indonesia and UK to further strengthen relations. Established in 2012, Indonesia-UK strategic partnership continues to flourish based on shared values, mutual respect and benefit, as well as support for sovereignty and territorial integrity. Colleagues, this morning, Secretary Charles paid a courtesy call to President Jokowi. The focus of discussion was the follow-up of bilateral meeting between President Jokowi and PM Johnson in Glasgow on the sidelines of COP26, particularly potential cooperation related to carbon market, potential cooperation on lithium battery, and cooperation on vaccine and biotechnology. President Widodo mentioned that he will send a team to actualize this cooperation. Colleagues from the media, Secretary Charles and I just concluded our bilateral meeting. We discussed a wide range of bilateral, regional, and global issues of common concern. At the beginning of the meeting, I congratulated UK for hosting the COP26. On climate issues, I underlined that Indonesia does not want to be trapped in rhetoric. We prefer to walk the talk. In this regard, the statement of President Widodo during the Volu meeting was very clear. The President, among others, mentioned that Indonesia aims to transform its forest and land use sector into net carbon sink by 2030. This is Indonesia's commitment to be part of solution. Indonesia's concrete achievement on forestry sector is beyond doubt. In 2020, for example, forest fire was minimized by 82%. In 2019, emissions from forest and land use were reduced by 40.9% compared to 2015. Deforestation has also fallen to its lowest level in the last 20 years. All of this was accomplished when the world lost primary forests by more than 12% last year. This success was achieved because Indonesia put climate action within the context of sustainable development. Sustainable forest management policy should combine environmental with economic and social consideration. Colleagues from the media now allow me to convey three main five main points raised in the meeting. First, on the Indonesia Presidency of G20, I share the priorities of Indonesia Presidency. Inclusiveness is the key spirit of the Indonesia Presidency. Enhancing a stronger global health architecture, energy transition and digital transition will be amongst the most top priority of Indonesia Presidency. I thank UK for its support toward Indonesia Presidency starting 1st December this year. Second, recover from the pandemic together. Indonesia appreciate the UK's support of 1 million dose sharing of vaccine. We share similar views on the importance of vaccine equity and non-discrimination against any vaccine. In the long run, we explore cooperation to build national, regional, and global health resilience. Among others, strengthening cooperation on pharmaceutical and medicine industry, developing Indonesia as a regional hub for vaccine production, and UK support for the financial mechanism for the pandemic preparedness and response taken up by the G20 Finance and Health Task Force that will be finalized inshallah during the Indonesia G20 presidency. Third, recover our economy. UK is the largest partner for Indonesia in Europe, both for trade and investment. 
And despite the pandemic, I'm very pleased to note that our trade and investment relation continue to progress. On trade, until August 2021, the bilateral trade has increased by 14.69% from the same period last year. On investment, in the third quarter of 2021, FDI from UK have significantly increased from 37.3 million, uh, sorry, increased significantly from 37.3 million. I'm very glad that the meeting with the UK investor on the sidelines of the COP26 generated new commitment of 9.29 billion US dollar for green economy. I also during the meeting convey requests for more incentive for Indonesian timber under FLECTI VPA cooperation. And we agreed to encourage progress of the Joint Economic and Trade Committee, JATCO, to discuss possibility of establishing free trade or limited trade deals and promote mutual recognition of standard and certification. We also agreed to intensify cooperation in the digital economy and the cyber security sector. And we started the discussion on best ways to save to have safe mobility between two countries. The fourth issue during the meeting, we agreed also to strengthen the existing partnership forum between Indonesia and UK. And we agreed to start designing the roadmap of our bilateral relation and even we agreed to finalize it before end of this year. Colleagues, the last issue that we discussed during the meeting is of course on the global and regional issues. I congratulated the UK as the new ASEAN dialogue partner and look forward to work together among others in building concrete cooperation to implement the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. On Afghanistan, we share the same views on the need for the Afghan people to live in a peaceful, stable, and prosperous Afghanistan. I reiterated Indonesia's commitment to continue our support and will continue to communicate with countries on how best to help the Afghan people. On Myanmar, we share common views on the need to bring back democracy as well as in ensuring the safety and well-being of the people of Myanmar. We reiterated the significance of the implementation of the five point of consensus and ensuring the delivery of humanitarian aid for the Myanmar people. Colleagues, now, I would like to invite Secretary Truss to share her views. Please, please. Foreign Minister Retno, ladies and gentlemen, it's a huge pleasure to be here in Indonesia. Uh, thank you to President Widodo and the Foreign Minister for giving me such a warm welcome here in Jakarta. And thank you to both of them for their fantastic support at COP26 and the commitment that Indonesia has made to tackling climate change. It's an early priority for me as Foreign Secretary to come here to Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia is a key strategic partner for the United Kingdom. As the world's third largest democracy, an economic powerhouse, and a friend of the United Kingdom, uh, we are determined to deepen our relationship with Indonesia and I'm looking forward to following up on the very positive discussion that we've had today. The UK wants to work around the world to enhance our economic and security relationships to benefit both of our economies and people, but also to promote global stability. As the Foreign Minister has said, today we have agreed to set out a roadmap for our future cooperation. Uh, we've agreed to uh, complete that roadmap by the end of this year so we can see real benefits delivered to the people of both Indonesia and the United Kingdom. 
Uh, this will incorporate areas like trade, uh, where we have the new Joint Committee established, which is going to meet early next year. Uh, we already have a £3 billion trading relationship with Indonesia, but this could be much greater. Uh, there is huge potential for us to trade more uh, with each other. We've also agreed on the area of investment. Uh, we want to make sure there is more UK-backed investment going into Indonesia. Uh, in particular, uh, we've been talking about areas like the green economy and green energy. Uh, we've been discussing infrastructure. We've been discussing life sciences, but there is a huge uh, potential pipeline of investment that both the UK government and the UK private sector uh, is keen to support. We've also discussed as an element of the roadmap closer cooperation on digital and technology. We need to make sure that technology standards are shaped by the free world and we want to work together with Indonesia in areas like cyber and also the next generation of technologies, whether that's 5G, 6G, or indeed areas like artificial intelligence and quantum. We also discussed the importance of security and stability in the Indo-Pacific region. Two weeks ago, the UK's carrier strike group visited Jakarta, and next year, UK-designed frigates will be built in Surabaya. This is part of our extensive cooperation in the area of defence. We want to deepen our cooperation in the area of maritime uh, security, and we are also launching our new joint working group on counter-terrorism and cyber dialogue as well. We've also discussed the vital importance of health, uh, and in particular, the deployment of vaccines. We were pleased to be able to supply a million vaccines to Indonesia, and we want to work together to cooperate on health resilience, uh, making sure that all countries have access to those vital supply chains. We've also looked at supply chains more broadly, and it will be incredibly important for both the United Kingdom and Indonesia that we have resi resilient supply chains in all areas. We are delighted uh, to be a new ASEAN dialogue partner, and we discuss that issue and how we can, as the United Kingdom, can deepen our cooperation across the region. And I will be meeting uh, the ASEAN group later today. We've also discussed Indonesia's presidency of the G20 next year, which is going to be an extremely important moment for the world as we look to uh, recover the economy post-COVID and improve our international uh, resilience. We also discussed the importance of stability in Afghanistan and making sure the people of Afghanistan receive the humanitarian support that they need. Uh, we also discussed Myanmar and the importance of bringing back democracy to Myanmar and implementing ASEAN's five-point consensus. The Foreign Minister, it's a huge pleasure to be here in Indonesia. This is a very, very important relationship for the United Kingdom. I'm looking forward to working with you closely and building on what we've agreed to promote freedom and prosperity, both here in this region, but also more widely across the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Terima kasih, teman-teman.